I've been seeing like, you know how in uh, kind of the mid 2000s that like 80s pop sound kind of came back? Are you noticing a rev kind of a revival like lately in that like late 90s kind of alt rock genre? Do you think that sound's gonna have a comeback, like your sound? I don't, I don't think so. I really don't. Oh yeah. I think because the way it happens, and you got to think about the band that impacts it. I think there's been so many bands that, like you're talking about, that are more '80s alternative uh, feeling. And I'm sure there'll be other bands that might come back sounding like '90s. But there was something about the '90s um, that, sure, the beginnings of it, like the alternative bands, where it just sounded like the bands like the Pixies or Nirvana or uh you know pavement or you know like just the way that the even like if you think of how pop music was a little bit like the juliana hatfields and there was always like a, a really dirtiness to the sound of the recording like yeah. it sounded like they were in a garage <laughs> and that just kind of trashy and and almost terrible like it was yeah. always almost like mistakes and bat, bat, like there was weird isolation on stuff and so yeah, the, the way it sounded was almost like just really independent feeling. So it's kind of impossible to, to re-copy that, you know, because there was a lot of naivety in that 90s stuff. Yeah, you know I what so. I mean? Yeah. So, I, I'm, so it doesn't mean it's condescending when I'm saying it will come <laughs> back. But then there was an, in, the influx of like the oversaturated, overproduced mm. rock bands like the Creeds and the Limp Biscuits, where it was just so kind of theatrical and dramatic that it was just you know i don't i don't know if people can can look at that the same way you know and like if a new one came out i'm sure it could in like another like in maybe you know middle america middle of the country kind of people that like like that dramatic rock and are okay with that stuff but to come back on the mainstream it's just i don't know if that'll happen a similar thing with the 70s when you had I don't know, bands like Loverboy or for something, they always had a, a kind of a chip on their shoulder thought-wise of like, oh, Loverboy, you know, they were kind of kind of cheesy maybe, you know, <laughs> but they, you know, they aren't really, but uh, the, there's an element of like the, the tight leather pants yeah. and the, the, the way they looked in the videos. And, and even with 80s, uh, it was kind of like 80s hair metal. It's yeah. like when that went big, you can't think of it coming back unless it's like the people that wanted it to come back and they're playing a smaller place and they're having a party at that level. Yeah. When, it, when it's like part of the culture in a sense and it's more yeah. the party than the thing, it's just, or even... It's like, the, it's like a sign of the times. Yeah, it's just, it's impossible to recapture that without it's feeling just kind of like a renaissance of that, or a party about that, there, a theme, you know? Nice. So I'm sure that's why 90s, People love to celebrate the 90s and the music and everything because there's so many hit songs that people love, you know. So it's, 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 a, it's a tough question because I think also the way modern great bands, it's come almost, they, a lot of them seem like bands like from the 70s where they're just really good at playing together. And that's why people are getting into them. Yeah. So the, uh, the, the actual... I, I don't know, the idea of what it is to be a band where there's more, people will de demand more f physical kind of performance out of the instruments. They want to see communication on a higher level. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, uh, yeah. Bands like Alt-J, it's different. Mm. You know, the people are like, well, the arrangements are different, uh, but the musicianship is really strong. You yeah. know? So um, there's so many young Canadian bands even, like, from the, even though the Arkells are probably the most popular, mm. they're still a really great live band, and they understand what it is to be that. They work really hard. They they you know they rehearse all week before shows, and they've always done that since they started. That, that you had to kind of quit your job to do this, no matter what, because we have to work every day. And yeah. there's something to be said about that because that's why they can go on stage with the same. PA on a festival as everybody else, but just somehow seem a little bit bigger and yeah, it, it's it, it's it's there. But that's with any great live band like Arcade Fire is the same way. They, yeah. they, they play their music or even Winter Sleep. They don't need to be in a huge place to get big feeling, you know. Yeah. So it's it's 
it's crazy the amount of talent that's out there in Canadian music. I have to, you got to give credit to the Canadian uh, grant system, the fact that they support it. Mm. Because it's a lot of these great records wouldn't be made if, if it weren't for the, the, don you know, the donations of the taxpayers' dollars to keep it going. And I, 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 I'd be pretty proud of it, the fact that there's so many good ones.